Nothing but smooth sailing as a regular season has come to an end for St. Mary's College sail team. Now it's time for the national championships, which happens to be hosted by the Seahawks. Something in which head sailing coach Adam Werblow feels pretty, pretty, pretty good about. Starting May 31st, uh, St. Mary's College is going to be hosting the Team Race National Championships here, the Annapolis Performance Sailing Team Racing Championships, where the top 16 schools in the country will meet head-to-head -head in three versus three competition. And the uh, St. Mary's College has finished uh, the last two years second at, e at these championships. Uh, last year in Florida and the year before in Texas. So we're hoping to be able to improve our situation. Uh, last time St. Mary's College won these championships was in 2010. And uh, we're, we've been really training hard and we have the same group of uh, all seniors uh, going at it. So hopefully we can be, we can be a little bit better this time. Hosting the Nationals is a big deal. We, we, uh, we last hosted the National Championships in 2000 and we're really excited to be able to do it. Uh, obviously we have a tremendous body of water here and great spectating, and great viewing for everybody on shore. Um, really nice fair sailing conditions. But for, you know, now we have the Teddy Turner Waterfront has been improved by the James B. Muldoon River Center. And so it's going to be a really prideful thing for us to be able to host these championships in our new facility. It's now uh, going on its sixth year, um, and, and so we're, we're really looking forward to it. There's a lot that goes into it uh, in every aspect, as you can imagine, being a host of the national championships. Um, and as soon as we're done with the team racing national championships, we roll right into what's called the dinghy nationals, where uh, each there would be 36 schools eliminating to 18 after two days so that one will that championship will start right after the other so it'll start june 3rd and the semifinals the first round of national championships eliminating from 36 to 18 will happen um on the third and fourth and then the top 18 teams will go for the national championship on the fifth and sixth so there's going to be a lot of schools here in st mary's county we're going to have the top 36 schools in the country that play in the, this arena um, it, it will all be here. So it's pretty exciting for us. Back here now in the Channel 10 studios with a man I affectionately call the man, the myth, the legend, Riken head lacrosse coach John Southern. <laughs> coach, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Now, Obviously, the se season didn't end the way we had all hoped, uh, bowing out in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, however, now that it is over, put a bow on it for me and just kind of wrap up the season as a whole and just give me an overview. Well, we had a, a very young team this year. Uh, we had 15 freshmen and sophomores on our varsity uh, that participated in our quarterfinal round against DeMatha. DeMatha was ranked 16th in the country, had an excellent team. They had 15 seniors, so there was pretty big contrast there. Um, but I, I, I thought the kids did a great job. They won twice as many games than they lost. They won, I think their regular season was 12 and 6. Mm -hmm. uh, big win over South River, which was ranked uh, fifth in the Metro at the time. They're the top team in Anne Arundel County. We beat St. Albans in overtime, which is a good win. They turned around and beat uh, Georgetown Prep, who was ranked number one in the Metro, and they also beat St. Stephen's, who was ranked number four. Wow. So we were inconsistent, and you kind of expect that with all the youth, but I, I, I like the kids and I like their work ethic, so we were pretty happy. Bright future, obviously, heading forward there. I hope so. At Riken Lacrosse. Speaking of which, you just wrapped up your 25th season. As 26. Like 26, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, coach. I got to give you that one extra one there. Your 26th season huh. as head coach there. Are, do you ever think about retiring? Are you in your prime, coach? Are you in your coaching <laughs> prime right now? Doesn't feel like it when I wake up in the morning, but uh, I, I still enjoy it. I, I love working with the kids, being on the field, and, and watch them work hard and develop and go on to college. So we've had over 130 kids go on to college to play, and um, it, it, it it gives, I, I get a lot, of, a lot of thrill out of it, so I, I see no, no, no time soon. Now, a lot of people don't know this. Of course, I know it because we both went to the greatest college of all time, <laughs> Towson University. Shout out. Um, but you were an incredible goalie. You were an All-American there. 
Uh, talk to me about if you had to give a scouting report of yourself now with all your coaching knowledge, what were you like as a player? Uh, that's, that's hard to say. I, I guess very intense, um, very vocal on the field, and um, I played every game as though it were the championship game. I try to approach every practice the same way. And uh, as a goalie, you know, you're, you're the last line of defense, and you, you should tr do anything possible to make the save, well, you know, not just your stick, but any part of your body. And um, you're really, it's a very important position. It's the backbone here. So, you know, you're not the guy that gets all the, the points and the goals scored and the name in the paper. But um, I've always liked defense and I've always admired the defensemen, the big guys in front of me. They don't get their name in the paper, but they do the dirty work. So, Of course, coaches' kids all played great players in their own right. Um, you sort of touched on it there a little bit, so I think I know your answer, but I still have to ask it. If you're building a fantasy lacrosse team, okay, and you can pick one player to start from, uh, do you pick an attackman, a midfielder, one of those big defensemen you were talking about, or do you go goalie? I've always gone with goalies uh, because we've had a lot of teams, well, even before the youth league started, we, our program existed on kids, on just athletes who never played the game before. But you can have some average teams, but if you have a great goalie in there, he can make up for a lot of the, the weaknesses of the rest of the kids, and, uh, and he can make some special saves to keep the games close or keep everybody in it here. So you, you need a very athletic kid to play in the goal. A former goalie picking a goalie to start a team. No surprises there, right, Coach? Uh, last question for you. How do you now get over the hump come the playoffs? You've won a championship, been there, done that, know what it takes. What do you do now, especially with a young team sort of molding them in that, you know, championship mind frame? What's that next step to get over that hump and get them to that level? It takes a lot of work uh, on their own in the off season. It's just not during the spring. And uh, we, we, we do evaluations every year at the end of the year with each individual player. And, and we tell them what they need to work on, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. and. Uh, we hope they're going to really put in a lot of effort, and a lot of kids do. And we'll, we'll see how they come back next fall in the winter and uh, how it carries over. But the fact that we had so many young kids playing this year, they got a, a lot of great experience playing at a top level uh, with our league and our schedule. So uh, we're hoping these kids are going to grow up a little bit over the next year and come back and be better players. So that's all we can do. But we. We try to get to that uh, championship game at College Park. Uh, that, that's our goal every year. So. Reagan lacrosse head coach, John Southern, a legend. <laughs> coach, I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching okay. Southern Maryland Sports Journal with me, Travis Thomas, exclusively on MetroCast Channel 10. Changing times brings changing needs. That's why for your convenience, Booth's Heating and Air have extended their service hours to 10 hours a day, Monday through Saturday, at regular service rates. Through rigorous training classes and courteous business practices, Booth's technicians always go above and beyond to provide you with award-winning customer service that you can trust. Booth's Heating and Air, serving the Southern Maryland area since 1993.